reunion i loved it Mm -hmm. i loved it so much it was probably the best hour and 44 minutes of television i have seen in a long time i didn't even realize how involved i was with that show and still until until i started watching the reunion and then i was like wait a minute i know i love friends but I didn't realize that I love like I'm definitely a super fan. Like as they were talking about everything, I was like, I remember that episode or, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. I, I was getting really involved. I was like yelling at the TV the whole time. Um, my boyfriend walked in the room and started talking. and I was like, shut up because <laughs> I, I just I had a focus. I, I actually like paused and rewound because I didn't want to miss every single word everybody was saying. Mm-hmm. So let me just take it back a second. I, I wasn't sure how they were going to do it. We've seen a lot of these reunion shows where they basically just it's very predictable. It's not interesting. The thing that was really amazing about the Friends reunion was that they they told us things about the cast, the show, the casting process, secrets about them, things that we never knew, even mm-hmm. as fans. So we learned new stuff. So that was amazing. Plus, the idea of shooting it where they had. James Corden was doing some interview. There was some backstage stuff. There was some behind the scenes. There was the table read. The fact that they cut that all where they kept jumping from thing to thing, to, it was so unpredictable. You didn't know what was going to happen next. You didn't know how they were going to. We knew Lady Gaga was going to be on it and Justin Bieber, but how? Like, how are they bringing mm-hmm. them in? So every the way that they handled it was so incredibly creative and in keeping with that show, in keeping with what that show always did. My boyfriend asked me, like, what was it about Friends? Like, why were you so attached to it? He's like, I didn't really get into that show, but you're a big fan. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason is because it was the first show for certainly my generation that felt very relatable. I feel like a lot of the sitcoms that we grew up watching were very like, boom, boom, shh. you know, it was really corny. It was really stupid punchlines. It was predictable storylines. This was not that at all. Things happen that would never, you'd never be able to predict, you know, relationships happening. And the, the, the writing was so good. It was genuinely funny. It was so perfectly cast. So I thought the thing about the reunion that was the most special was that it was a reunion for them. It was their reunion. And they shot it almost like a reality show. Mm-hmm. And they, when, David Schwimmer comes out first onto the set. You really experience that moment with him. There he is back on the set and you see the memories come flooding back to him and he's just gently touching things. Oh, wow. And it just, it felt like it was lots of fly on the wall moments, lots of personal moments between them, um, personal moments, with that that they were sharing and then there were like things that you thought that they didn't want to share but they did because they were just feeling very nostalgic and sentimental in the moment and they kind of surprised themselves with some of the stories that they told so i just thought they handled it really well and i was sucked in from the very beginning i can watch another hour and 44 minutes of those people i was worried about it because they were bringing lady gaga and justin bieber and james corden in i didn't think that was going to work I didn't know how they were going to do that. I thought it was just going to be them sitting there answering the same BS questions we've heard. Right. And maybe Lady Gaga performs a song and then Justin Bieber performs a song. You you didn't realize they were going to incorporate them into the whole narrative of real. I mean, this was this was their reunion. Mm -hmm. We were seeing them get together and reminisce. And this is these are what happened. This is what happened to them. You know what I mean? It just it felt like it felt like a really well shot reality show, but a reality show with people that always avoided the camera. You know, Jennifer Aniston was right. never somebody who really shared much about her personal life. All of them, I felt like they were all being very candid for the first time. Interestingly enough, though, Matthew Perry said very little the entire time. And he chalks that up to having surgery on his teeth. Dental surgery, he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah and uh, that's what they all say <laughs> when they're like that. He he was 
I don't know. It was uncomfortable some part parts. I'm glad he was there. I mean, it wouldn't have been yeah. the same if he wasn't there. Right. So I'm glad no matter what shape he was in, he was mm-hmm. there. I think we all fear for him because we don't like the way he's he's looking, he's acting, you know. I don't Something's know. up with him. And the only reason why I call bullshit on the dental surgery thing is because dental surgery is an excuse you use when you do an interview to promote a movie and it's like you're in a junket and it's just one of like a million things. Or you go into a Starbucks and you're being you're behaving bizarrely and someone pulls out their camera and you go, oh, you know, dental surgery. Hmm. The Friends reunion, the thing we waited 25 years for. If you show up there and you're acting strangely, you can't use an excuse like dental surgery. Don't have dental surgery before this major pop culture moment we've been waiting 25 years for. Yeah, and we all knew what date it was going to be shot. So you can't use that excuse. Right. Do it a month before that. And nobody has had worse dental surgery than you. Oh, I don't have any of my own original teeth. And you went on the air that day after having surgery so that doesn't uh, you can't say that to me and many I don't surgeries I, I mean i had dental implants i had teeth pulled. on the air the next I, day exactly on the air the next day i came in with porcelain laminates remember i came in they hadn't put the porcelain laminates in yet so i just had like these fangs mm-hmm. and it, made, it made me talk like this i was talking like this the whole the whole though because i couldn't because my two front teeth were gone i you know so i came i made it i said hey listen i'm gonna talk a little funny today because I don't have two front teeth. And that's what I did. But I was on the air. I did my job. But this was shot over a course of many days. Right. So you can't use that excuse if you're if you're him. But had dental surgery for an entire week every day. Every day. And then he said, wait, <laughs> I, you got to stop because I have to go be with James Corden. I thought the table read was very interesting. Because not only did it show us what a table read must have been like for them, like how much fun they had and how much they really, truly, genuinely love each other, but you really got to see how incredibly talented they were. They fell right back in those roles. It wasn't corny. It wasn't weird to read the lines. They were right there. It was, they were really talented. The fact that they can pick up a script and suddenly she's Monica again, she's Phoebe again, Mm -hmm. you know, he's Ross again. It was, it it was really incredible. But when you look at the script, the thing that blew my mind is when you look at the script and you see the words pivot, 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 that's not really funny on paper. It's not until you give them the words and they act it out to where that scene became, you know, it, it, it stand the test of time. And that's the point that Kit Harrington made from Game of Thrones. That's the other thing I loved about it. Jon Snow, you know, what I mean, like they had they had all these celebrities who knew that so many of these celebrities love friends the way we do. Mm-hmm. We just assume that celebrities are like, yes, the, that's their work. I, I like my work. They like their. You don't think of them as, you know, total stands like we are. And you could see Lady Gaga when she walked in. She forgot the word guitar. She bumped into the door. She was clearly nervous because. She was meeting Lisa Kudrow. She was going to work with Lisa Kudrow. You can tell that she was definitely um, fangirling. Well, look what it did to other people all over the world when they were bringing people from everywhere and how friends touched them in different languages and different everything, different cultures. It, it touched everybody. So, Which was another surprising aspect of the reunion special. That's even that, like I would have never, if you would have said to me, what do you think is going to happen in this reunion special? I'd be like, well, you're going to get a couple of cameos. You're going to get this. You're going to get that. I would have never thought that they were going to have a well-produced piece of people all over the world talking about how this show truly changed their lives. That mm-hmm. was, I thought that was really amazing. I thought that was a great part. Um, If you would have told me that before I saw this, I would have said, that's horrible. Cut that. That's not good. But seeing it, yeah, that that blew my mind. So here are some highlights, some things that we learned that uh, we really didn't know until we saw the reunion. And this is one of them. This is where uh, David talks about he was really crushing on Jennifer Aniston, like the rest of us. But... He was with her. The first season, we I had a major crush on Jen. Um, I, and, and I think it was we both... 
that's what was interesting because then, you know, then they showed in the very end, I don't, know how long, I don't know how long you stayed with it, but the very end, they were showing like some footage just from, I guess, personal footage from there. They always, as somebody who has uh, worked on television sets, I'll tell you, they always have a, a camera person, and a videographer. So they have like a behind the scenes person filming, mm-hmm. the, you know, and then sometimes the camera is rolling, but that's very expensive to keep a camera rolling. So they always have a videographer. So there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff and you can see David Schwimmer and Jennifer Aniston flirting on the couch, touching each other on the couch and like giving each other the eye. Like you can tell that they definitely look. I mean, when you work with somebody every day on a show like that and it's, emotional and your actors actors fall in love all the time think about think about all the actors who met on sets and ended up married i mean look i mean speaking about jennifer aniston that's how the whole thing happened with brad pitt and angelina jolie well yeah mr and mrs smith right i mean that's the breakup heard around the world we're still talking about it all these years later yet that's how it happened. It happened when they were on a set together. And we hear that all the time. You know, Rita Wilson, and Tom Hanks. I mean, a lot of these relationships form when people meet on sets of shows. Here's another highlight of uh, them talking about probably this will this as in this reunion, them being in the same room won't happen again. Honest, this will really make me cry. But this will be the last time that we're ever asked about the show as a group that we will do this. Like, we're not going to do this again in 15 more years. I thought it was very interesting. I love stories about who almost got cast in what mm-hmm. and it ended up being somebody else. And it's people that made the role iconic that you can't picture anybody else in that role. You know, we've heard many times about all the different people who are supposed to be Phoebe um, in Pretty Woman, for example, instead of Julia Roberts. I mean, that made her career mm-hmm. to this day. She's I mean, she's still a pretty woman to me. She's still, you know, that that character. Um, so I thought it was really interesting when they talked about how hard it was to find all of these actors to play these roles. They, they knew exactly what they wanted. They knew they wanted David Schwimmer. Mm-hmm. He he had done a lot of television prior to this. He was on L.A. Law and ER, and he was on tons of stuff. His his resume, if you go at his IMDb page, you're going to be shocked at all the work he did prior. But it wasn't working out for him. Things weren't things weren't going well for him. He got very frustrated and went back to I think Chicago mm-hmm. was where he was doing theater, and was like, "That's it. I'm done with television." And then Marta Kaufman had cast him in something else. They knew him. They liked that whole hangdog face they said of his. They wrote the role of Ross for him. Mm-hmm. In his voice. Him. Yeah, in his voice. They heard his voice in their head as they were writing it. Begged him to come back to Los Angeles and do the pilot. And I mean, I'm, I'm, my guess is he's really happy he did because it think? was life-changing, you know? <laughs> Look at the money he gets off reruns alone. Well, they do a one-off. Like a movie, like, yeah. Right. Things that other At people do. And as characters. They ended the show very nicely. Everyone's lives are very nice. And they would have to unravel all those good things in order for there to be stories. And, yeah, I don't want anyone's happy ending unraveled. I was happy that she said that because I don't want a, a friend's movie. I don't I don't want them to do no. it. I don't want to I don't want an update. That's why I mean Sex in the City. I mean they're coming back with Sex in the City. I'm not looking for that. You know, she ended up with Big. That's it. I'm done. I didn't I didn't even need the movies. Yeah, well, the second one nobody needed <laughs> that movie. Um yeah, she, I didn't need the I mean, first right. one, frankly. I, I didn't need the first one either. I was happy with the way it ended. I was I was done with it by the time they got to Paris. By the time she she was with Barishnikov, I was like, all right, I I'm over the show. But What's interesting about the Friends casting is, you know, as they were sitting there, it's like you think about other people that could have been in those roles whose lives would have been changed. You know, they already knew Matthew Perry from Dream On because they they were writers for Dream On. Mm -hmm. Um, Phoebe, you know, Lisa Kudrow, she was already playing Ursula on Mad About You. So one of the main producers from Mad About You was like, I got your Phoebe. That was a done deal. And the real the only people that really had audition like over and over were Jennifer Aniston and Matt LeBlanc. Mm-hmm. And to think that they almost maybe didn't make those. They, they, they what like who else would have been cast? You know, 
Well, the funny thing is when I was watching and they were showing behind the scenes of the opening credits when they were in the fountain and all that, uh-huh. I was thinking they had no idea at that moment in their head that their lives were about to change right? forever. I mean, they don't, none of them have to work anymore just off of the syndication alone. Right. You know, the checks they make off of this show, there's no reason to work ever again. So they, they had gone through uh, Tiffany Thiessen. Remember mm-hmm. when Tiffany uh, Amber Thiessen was like from Saved by the Bell was really, really famous. They were considering her as Rachel Green. Hmm. And uh, Jane Krakowski also was considered as Ra- for Rachel Green. No, Jennifer was the perfect person because you really didn't know who she was. Um, Tia Leone, they considered. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't have been good. Wouldn't have wouldn't been, been the same. Good. Yeah. Uh, Leah Remini, they were considering as Monica before King of Queens when she was like a young actress just starting out. This is like, you know. I could see that. Yeah. Leah Remini, I could see playing Monica, perhaps. Janine Garofalo was also auditioned for Monica Geller. Wouldn't have been good at all. No. No. Eric McCormick as Ross. I could see that. I think what I had read is that if David Trimmer said no, they had Eric McCormick, you know, from Will and Grace. Mm-hmm. He played Will. They had him all ready to go next. He would have been good. He he doesn't have the comedy that Schwimmer has, but it would have been, it could have worked. How about this? John Favreau, they were considering for Chandler. No. I mean, he, he was in the show for like yeah. half a minute. And oh, right. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. He played uh, one of Monica's boyfriends, right? Right. The rich, rich boyfriend who yeah, yeah, wanted yeah. to be in the, the boxing wasn't a very good storyline. Uh, nah, he he wouldn't have been good for that. Well, um, co-creator David Crane did want John Favreau, by the way. No, John created Baby Yoda. That's all. Right, right. <laughs> if he would have done that, he wouldn't have created Baby Yoda. And right. my life would not be complete. So. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't do friends. Um, Vince Vaughn was was considered for Joey. No. Can you imagine? No, that would have been Vaughn. horrible. Yeah. He came in, they liked that he was handsome and tall. They thought he was a good actor. But um he was missing that boyish charm. No, he wasn't funny enough. They were looking for somebody that was really funny. So then they went to Hank Azaria. Except mm. He wasn't handsome enough. Right. So they were like, okay, so Vince Vaughn, handsome enough, but not funny. Hank Azaria, very funny, not handsome enough. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And then the last one, this will shock you. They actually auditioned and considered Ellen DeGeneres to play Phoebe. But yeah, Phoebe. That, that, no, nah, I mean, that maybe could have worked, but. Now they picked the right one. Yeah. For that. So there you go. Um, so here's some trivia. Now that you want, I'm going to skip some questions because okay. <laughs> you, you, you know the answer. Like number four question was, who's the actor who played Joey? You know, you know the, an- you know the right, answer for that. Uh-huh. All right. So who was the best paid member of the cast? The best paid? Yeah. Who made the most money? Courtney no, Cox, they made the s- Jennifer no, Aniston. They, all, they all made the same. They all made the same. Correct. Yeah. Uh, how many episodes were filmed? 236, 350, or 420? Filmed as opposed to another way of shooting it? No, just how many episodes were filmed in total? Oh, um, what, what are my numbers? 236, 350, or 420? 236. Correct. What was the, the show originally called? Was I mean, it... Friends okay. like these, six of one, or the one in the cafe? Oh, wow. Um, I didn't think it was any of those, because I remember I'd hearing that they were going to call friends something else, but I thought it was something completely else other than those. Um, wait, friends like these. Six of one, or the one in the cafe. Oh, geez. Uh, friends like these? I thought that was correct also, but it was six of one. That's stupid. 
Yeah, I thought it was friends like What does that even mean? Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, How many times was Ross legally divorced? Legally divorced. Three, Um, four, or two? Two. Three. Three. Oh, I was going to say three, but okay. I know that he was married three times, but I only think that he had, I thought that maybe he only had two divorces. Two legal divorces. Okay. No, it was three. Three was it. Where did Carol meet Susan? Um, At the office, Central Park, or at the gym? At the gym? It was at the gym. Yeah. Because she was going to the gym more and more and more. Right, right, right. Uh, How many times did Chandler and Janice break up? Five times, six times, nine times. Nine times. It was five. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what, and I didn't know this. What was Gunther's job before he worked at Central Perk? Was it a fashion designer, soap opera actor, or university lecturer? Soap opera actor. Very good. How'd you know that? Because that's a Friends trivia thing that if you're a real Friends fan, you know the answer to that. I, did, I didn't even... I don't remember what episode they even said that. They acknowledge it. Oh, do they really? Yeah, they acknowledge it at some point. What was the name of the first restaurant Monica worked at? Oh, Alessandro's, okay. Insomnia Cafe, or Slug and Lettuce? Alessandro's. Alessandro's is correct. How many sisters did Joey Tribbiani have? Oof. Okay. Yeah, that's a hard one. It's a lot of them. He had a lot of them. Um, do, are you going to give me a choice or? Uh, nine, five, seven. Um, I'm going to go with seven. Yeah, you're correct. And that- they're all like, they're all named like Mary Elizabeth, Mary <laughs> Teresa, Mary, Mary Robert, Mary. Yeah, remember? Yeah. Uh, what did Monica's dad give her after her childhood belongings were destroyed? Their home, his car, fifteen grand. Oof. Um. That's easy. The money? No, nope. Porsche. His car? His oh, Porsche. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Which man did Phoebe keep a framed photo of as she believed it was her granddad? Dominic Cummings, Albert Einstein, or Donald Trump? Albert Einstein. It's Einstein. All right. Uh, so, you know, this one, what was the first character cast? David, well, Courtney, or Jennifer? Well, obviously David, because they wrote that role for him. Right. If you notice, they came on the set in the order they were cast. Oh, you're right. So, when yeah. they came in for the reunion. Right. That's how they were cast. Right. I thought that was interesting. Uh, which Hollywood actor starred opposite Joey in his World War movie? Dave Patel, Gary Oldman, or Brad Pitt? Gary Oldman. Very good. Uh, why was James Michael Tyler cast as Gunther? Why? Yeah, why? His white hair made him look distinguished. He was the only extra who knew how to work the espresso machine. Or he used to make coffee for the director. Definitely number two. He was the only extra that can work the espresso machine. <laughs> Correct. Um, this is stupid. Which famous TV host was the favorite to play Phoebe? Ellen DeGeneres, Kelly Osborne, or Kelly Clarkson? So, I already told you it was Ellen yeah. DeGeneres. Yeah. What was Ross's excuse for cheating on Rachel? They were on a break. We were on a break. Yeah. So you knew that yeah, one. Yeah, that's everyone knows that one. Phoebe's people, uh, people that have never seen the show know that one. Yeah, Phoebe's uh most popular song. We know that. What was Silly Rachel guy. wearing in the first episode? Wedding dress. All right. Uh who said the very last line? Sure, where? Chandler, Phoebe, or Ross? No, it's Chandler. Chandler. They showed it like four times. Right. Uh Okay, now these are true and false. True or false. So all the cast members were wearing black and white in the show's opening credits. True or false? True. True. Joey proposed to Rachel and Phoebe. True. Monica and Joey were originally meant to be together. Um... 
Monica and Joey. They wanted them to be together originally. True. That was true. The opening credits were shot in New York. True or false? Um, you mean that fountain? Yeah. True. False. False. Okay. Yeah, yeah that because uh, the fountain is not in New York. That fountain is is out in L.A. where they were. Was that the, the original region. fountain they were in front of? That's what they said. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that or not. Uh, number five, last one. Jennifer Aniston almost left before the last season. True or false? I mean, I, I think that might be true because her movie career started taking off, but I think contractually she couldn't. It was true. She yeah. almost left. Yeah, I'm saying it was true that she almost left, but she couldn't. Oh, uh, and the friends would have killed her. Right. Um, so... Let's see. Lion King Kitty said, see in the city. Oh, oh, so you're now if they're going to do the friends. If they're going to keep it going, we'll see them in senior living. David Seeley says, I love seeing Christina Applegate as Rachel's sister. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She was great as Rachel's sister, even though we didn't get to see her in the reunion. We did see Reese Witherspoon. Who looked amazing, by the way. Yeah, she's stunning and then i and i forgot like i was like oh that's probably where they met and now they work together on the apple tv show the morning uh morning morning show show. Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah lion king kitty knew seven seven sisters right yeah i thought five was weird i had to look that i had to look it up but yeah uh, you're right it's chewy said right reese witherspoon did play the other sister Mm -hmm. but they were so christine applegate and reese witherspoon were rachel's sisters but Joey's sisters were it was interesting that all those women that played Joey's sisters mm, they all looked alike yeah that was what was funny about it um that was great one of my friends put on Facebook really big friends fan huge friend you know kind of like us should she buy HBO Max just to watch that yeah just get it for a month or two and then ditch it you don't, you don't you don't have to sign up for a year, do you? I don't know. I don't know how they work that. But I think it's going to be that's going to be everywhere in a week. If you can wait a couple of days, it's probably going to all be on YouTube. Mm, They're going it's going to get leaked somehow. Yeah. You know, it was really good to watch it and I don't know if I would have paid whatever HBO Max is to watch right. it. But it was definitely worth the hour and a half of my time. I don't know if, if it was worth actual money. Did you watch it on the stick? How'd you watch it? Oh, we have HBO Max. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I got a new iPhone. They gave uh-huh. us free HBO Max. Right. So, oh, hell no. I'm not buying that. Have you ever known me to buy anything? No. Yeah, so I'm not know paying buy actual anything. money yeah, for you that. You love stuff for free. So, all in all, you know, it's funny. We talked to, about a week or two ago about the greatest comedies greatest sitcoms of all time the rolling rolling stone put out their list and we were disagreeing mm-hmm. with most of it and we were saying that friend should have been higher on the list mm-hmm. now i really feel like friend should have been much higher on the list because as we as we were re-watching a lot of the scenes and a lot of um some of the really funny lines it just it reminds me like it's hard to look at friends through a 2021 lens because a lot of people are like wow they didn't have enough diversity well no they didn't have enough diversity you're right that was a problem and they brought in like you know an asian character and a black character towards the end because somebody was like hey excuse me new york has more than just white people um that's definitely problematic yes but it still was a really funny show and still was really creatively funny it was still it came up with um i love the scenes where they showed like if a line didn't work if the if the audience didn't laugh they huddled and they rewrote the line right there Mm -hmm. and some of the lines they rewrote in those moments ended up being like iconic lines like they showed the one where joey says um whether in vegas and joey's like waiting for food and chandler says to him uh dude it's a buffet and joey gets up and goes this is where i make my money back Mm mm-hmm that was something they wrote on the fly. You know, the fact that they were not considering this was interesting. The fact that they were not considering having Monica and Chandler as a real couple, just right. sort of like a hick, uh, like a hiccup, like a, you know what I mean? Like you just like a relationship hiccup or like you end up sleeping with a friend and afterwards you go, whoops. Uh, uh. 
but the audience reaction changed their dynamic. They changed the perspective of the show. It made the writers go, hang on a minute. We're, mm-hmm. we're missing something. The audience knows something we don't know. And I think that's what's missing. I think you get a lot of uh, writers in writers' rooms who think they know better. These people were willing to listen to the the audience. So I thought that's why the show was so good. They gave us what we wanted. Yeah, I think you could fight that Ross and Rachel, I think Chandler and Monica were the better couple. Chandler and Monica were the better couple? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no question. I mean, when Monica proposed to Chandler... This is probably one of the greatest scenes on TV. Yeah. Where he walked in and she got on her knee and proposed to him. I mean, but that was talking have about that was that was really woke for its time. Right. You know, she was dating an older guy. They were they were all doing things that were very, you know, his wife ended up being gay and they handled that really well. Mm-hmm. And they had the baby together anyway. I mean, there, there were so many things in that sitcom that were really ahead of its time that now it's like a big yawn. But back then, you know, this is after. Remember, we had every sitcom had the same. It was the same trite families over and over and and uh you know the mother's judging a contest and the son is in it what does she do conflict of interest wah stupid shit so this was really refreshing and i think because of friends is why we ended up having sex in the city hmm. you know everybody looked at friends and thought oh i know somebody who's a chandler a phoebe a rachel even lady gaga coming out and saying to lisa kudrow thank you for playing the character that was unabashedly herself and and unapologetic for being herself and how that shaped who Lady Gaga became, you know, I just thought that that was, that's why the show was special. Everybody had one of those friends in their lives. At least everybody in New York that I grew up with did maybe, you know, obviously all over the world since the show was so big and then sex in the city. I kind of, I think kind of came out of that, but the difference was it was four women that were all part of you. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a little Miranda in them, a little Samantha in them, a little Carrie in them. I think that's why it was such a good, even though people go, I'm such a Carrie. Really, everybody has a little bit of each one of those characters. It was very, very relatable in a lot of levels. But it was very female-oriented. Friends was right down the middle. Exactly, which is why it had the mass appeal. Yeah, I, I could care the- less about sex in the city. No, I know. And I love, I love the younger generations that are rediscovering Friends. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. It's on Nick at night now, and it's still a TV show. If I'm flipping through, I'll stop and watch two or three episodes. I mean, there's no other TV show that I will stop and watch two or three episodes of a, uh, that I just saw two weeks ago. Yeah. I'll rewatch them because I missed something. There's no other TV show like that. Married with children. Maybe I'll stop and, and watch it. Maybe one. But friends, I'll, I'll it'll be five six episodes into it. I'll be I got to turn this off now. Yeah. So there's I, to me, friends is top five TV shows of all time. It's I go be. by like I go by the the GIF use usages or GIF usages, however you want to pronounce it. You know, and I I always have people sending me friends gifts all the mm. time. You know. Oh, by the way, speaking of gifts, only because I just learned this this week. Um, you probably don't use them all that much, but you've seen them take a guess at what the most who is the who who is the person or the people who are the most used who have the most gifs and are the most used gifs of all time like of of all people snoop dog snoop dog yeah i always use a snoop dog uh i don't know that's that's the only ones I use are Snoop Dogg and and I'll use a Trump one every now and then just to piss people off. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Wh- who is it? I would have guessed Kim Kardashian because there's so many Kim Kardashian gifs or gifs, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I use a lot of Schitt's Creek gifs, but that's a relatively new show, so right. probably not. It's The Rock. The Rock. Yep. Really. The Rock has the most gifs of any celebrity ever he's in, because, he's in more movies than any celebrity ever but also wrestling so it's all the yeah. wrestling ones it's all the movie ones it's all the every and people people love using them people use and there's so many of them well i just saw 
the previews for a new rock movie called The Jungle from Disney. Uh Haven't I already seen that like four or five times? Isn't he in every The Jungle movie (laughs) on Disney? I mean, do they just say, okay, we need a a male lead uh, the rock. Okay, who's the female? You know, there's they know it doesn't matter the rock is in it yeah they know how much money he's going to bring in opening weekend because he's the rock he's got a a built-in money to him right i mean he he brings he he is probably the biggest star on the planet right now on every level 